for and uh, eventually here. Uh, my specific role is uh, looking after future mobility, so you can break that down into connected vehicles, autonomous vehicles, shared vehicles, and electric vehicles. So looking at how we can bring that technology which our teams are working on and, and looking at specific cities and specific countries and in, in, uh, in, in bringing that scene to life. And so when you say specific countries, are you that you're, you're looking specifically at this region, are you? My role is not just this region, it's uh, an international role as well, looking at Asia Pacific. Uh, but, but for sure, uh, with the, the focus of the, the government here and uh, the, the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, uh, uh, we see this being a great opportunity in, in, uh, in Dubai, specifically the UAE, uh, and of course, looking at other countries. Do you feel the UAE is going to sort of lead the way in this? Certainly, they're looking to lead the way, and, and as I say, the, the, the vision here in, in, in Dubai is, is exactly that. Yeah, UAE is often leading the region in these sort of things, isn't it? Now, you've been really kind because you made this quite easy for us tonight, because what you've done is you brought along a presentation, right? I have. Hopefully, yeah. uh, so it's cool. exciting. Hopefully, this is going to work. So let's do, let's do it this way. Let's talk us through what you've got here. Yeah, so, so basically, this that's is... That's you down there. That's me down there, yeah. <laughs> And uh, this is, is, is basically an image of uh, some vehicles that, that do exist. Um, that's uh, an image of Shanghai, um, the, uh, the Science Museum in Shanghai. This is a concept uh, that we developed back in 2010 for the Expo in 2010, which were basically two, uh, a, a two-seater connected vehicle that we've been using to, to evaluate the technologies. And is this, is this a GM vehicle then? Absolutely, yes. And do these two people who are very, seem to be very, very happy and they look like they're watching a video of some kind, do they have any control over this vehicle or...? Uh... This particular concept does have some control, uh -huh. absolutely, uh -huh. absolutely. So this, this is as a concept in terms of how we were bringing all the technologies together. That has, that was back in 2010, so that this has evolved somewhat. But uh, I thought it was a good image to start off in, in terms of what the future may well look like. Oh, we're, we're all going to be pod people, in other words. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, let's move on then. Okay. So, I think the, the, the key thing is, if you turn on the TV, if you read uh, the, the magazines, there you, you'd see stories, um, millions and mi billions and billions of dollars, I should say, being invested in in the future of, uh, of technology. And I think the key thing here is, why, why, why are we doing all of this in the first place? There's some big macro, uh, there's some big macro issues that we are needing to deal with as, as a human race. And, and this all really starts with how and where we're living. 60% of the world's population will be in, ending up living in cities. And you just need to look out the door here in Dubai and you'll realize that that, that that is the case. Lots of towers being being built, people moving into the city, and that's about 5 billion people. Which are 5 billion? Hang on, what's the world population at the moment? 7 billion? Something like that. <laughs> so out of 7 billion people, we're projected already 5 billion of them that are going to live in cities. Exactly. Well, it's not enough room, really. That's the whole point. Yeah. So if you start, then start looking at what that basically means, is that's a lot of congestion, a lot of cars on the road. This is a, you know, a, a, a figure just from the so top 10 cities. $300 billion wasted from congestion. So how, what does that mean? That means just being stuck in traffic jams is costing society and the economy $300 billion. Exactly. And if you just look on your commute, your daily commute, if you live here in Dubai going up and down Sheikh Zayed Road, you realize that that's a lot of time wasted, uh, depending on which way you're going in, in, in terms of the traffic. And then all those cars on the road, meaning that unfortunately there are a lot of accidents. 1.3 million people die on the roads, unfortunately, each year. And to give you um, some, some view on that, that's uh, about the population of some of the smaller GCC countries. Yeah, um, it was very interesting. Yesterday we were having a discussion on road safety, and one of the panelists told us that for each death in the UAE, the cost to society is estimated at 6 million dirhams. Absolutely. Wow, that's incredible. So that's, yeah, that's an illustration of that right there. Yeah. And that, that, then we start looking at efficiency. So, um, again, if you're on your urban commute, then you realize that the majority of cars only have one person. That's a very inefficient yeah. means of transportation. It gives you the luxury of being by ourselves and listening to the music that you want to listen to, but at the end of the day, it's pretty efficient, inefficient, I should say. And again, when you get to your destination, the majority of our cars are all parked up, doing nothing for the majority of the day. So, yeah, again, that's a lot of our personal money tied up in, in, in vehicles that sit around doing nothing. So again, pretty inefficient form of transportation. And without getting too political, all those cars on the road really producing 
um, a lot of CO2 adding to adding to global warming. And to yeah. give you some uh, context of that, we haven't had uh, levels of 410 parts per million for about 800,000 years, so that's a significant number wow. that we need to deal with. But how much of that is road traffic? I mean, I thought that was more industry and manufacturing and also commercial mobility rather than actual consumer and passenger cars. But you're absolutely right. Vehicles are not just yeah. the, uh, the input into that, but it's, it's one of the easier um, inputs to, to actually control and to change. So if you start looking at other other forms, are a bit more challenging, a bit more difficult. Okay. Okay. So these are the big, these are the big reasons as to, uh, to to why we need to do something about it. And it, then if we look at that here in Dubai, and as I mentioned, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, very very clear as to how he sees Dubai being a smart city. Uh, and that means connected city, not just in terms of uh, automotive and, and transportation, but uh, you know, from, from, from our perspective, we, we see this as being a great opportunity. And he's been very specific here that by, by 2030, 25% of all trips will be uh, smart. So think of that as being connected, sustainable. So think about that as being electric and driverless. Think about that as being autonomous. So one in four cars by 2030 is anticipated or expected to be driverless. Not just cars, this also includes a metro, which is right. one of the trams, which right, right. by that time are uh, autonomous. But significantly, if you look at this, then a lot of the transport station will, this will need to be autonomous going forward as well. Yeah. So from GM's perspective, you know, we're a 106 year old company, and uh, a lot of people would think, uh, you know, what are we what are we doing in the technology space? You know, some people have called us dinosaurs, and certainly over the last ten years. That's a little bit unfair. Who said that? Bring them on stage. That's a bit outrageous. No. I think all automotive companies are essentially now technology companies, right? I think it's an inevitable transition. Well, I think that that's the point I'm trying to make here is that we we've been developing t technology for a hundred and six years, right? And, and whether you look at that as being airbags or ABS or technologies we would be normally using and not even thinking about, we've been building that technology along with our, our peers for that, 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 that amount of time. And indeed, we're evolving into what we would call, be calling a, a, a technology company in today's terms as well. And hopefully over, over the next few minutes, I'll be able to explain how. Okay. That's a good looking car, by the way. I did like that. <laughs> And so um, this is this is our management team met, uh, met by by Mary Barra, our CEO. And this is an audacious, uh, I, I, I would say, or could be said, uh, mission statement. But but we believe we can actually deliver this. So a world where there are zero zero crashes, crashes zero so, emissions, and zero congestion. Correct. That last one's going to be really hard. Going to be really hard. Well, you just told me that five billion people are going to live in our cities, right? Exactly. But we believe that because if you then start looking at how we drill this down. These are what we call the four pillars of mobility. So connectivity, sharing, electric, and autonomous. And we, are, we have been developing these technologies for some time, and I'll explain how. So this, so, these are, so this is the title of our talk today, the four pillars of mobility, and these are the actual four pillars. Connectivity, sharing, electric, and autonomous. Cool. Correct. So let's look at connectivity. Now, our connectivity platform is called OnStar, been around for 20 years, and over 1 billion interactions between customers and their cars and uh, OnStar team. So we have uh, in, in, uh, in, in the Americas, in China, in, in Europe, and uh, as we're rolling this out through our international region, which includes the, uh, the Middle East here, in its very basic form, OnStar is an equal service. So the OnStar technology is connected to uh, the safety technology. So um, if there is an accident, those technology would trigger and the OnStar system would automatically call our team and notify them that there's, there's been an accident. They would call uh, the emergency services teams and you would have an ambulance or uh, civil defense coming to you very quickly. So we've been, we, we have about 13 and this is done automatically. If you have a crash, does it do, does it do that automatically? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah in seconds. Absolutely. Wow. Seconds. So uh, you know, lots of lives are being saved, uh, saved by this, and you know, we're really looking to uh, develop. Hello. <laughs> we we'll be looking to. We'll get into that exactly. mobility action. Yeah. We'll be looking to uh, to to introduce this uh, at, at some point in the future. But really, from a point of view of Dubai and the UAE, uh, then the UAE government will be. Yeah. Uh, make this mandatory uh, over the course of 
Thank you, Matt Dukri. Because it is available here in some high-end luxury cars, I believe. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, but it's not just about uh, that, that type of te technology from a safety perspective. It's also, also about the congestion. So we just talked about yeah, congestion right. a second ago. And vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication is, is important. With this, this is a, a 2017 uh, Cadillac C CTS. Uh, where we've launched vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication earlier this year. And as you can see, what the vehicle basically does is talking to another CTS which is in front of it. So again, from a safety perspective, that helps in, in terms of the vehicle being able to see much more forward. But from a vehicle-to-infrastructure perspective, this is where the congestion aspect helps. So in the last few weeks, we've been, uh, we've been testing this particular vehicle in Shanghai, and that's connected to traffic lights. So again, as we move forward, you'll start to see vehicles, not just within the, uh, in, in, in the GM portfolio, but in, I'm sure in other manufacturers where the vehicles are talking to the infrastructure and start reducing the congestion. Yeah, well that's what I was going to ask. If that vehicle is talking to that vehicle, well, what about all the cars in the middle? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's, that, that's a key point. From, from GM's perspective, we, we can have control over our own portfolio, but we, we are obviously looking towards the future in terms of how Everyone's vehicle. Isn't that going to require a huge amount of communication and understanding between all the manufacturers to reach some kind of standardization in order to do this? Absolutely. I, I think that's one thing that you'll, you'll start to see over the course of the next 5, 10, 15 years is, is a lot more collaboration to get to a global standard, not just in terms of this, but in other aspects that I'll talk about. So let's move on to uh, on to sharing, and you know, what we mean by sharing here is is literally the sharing of the car. So that could be anything from um, uh, ride hailing. So I'm sure some of you in the audience have uh, Uber or Kareem on on your uh, on your phone. So it could be something as simple as that, or indeed sharing a car for a period of time. It could be a, a rental over an hour, or indeed literally sharing your own your own car. And then, sharing your own car. Yeah, so you, you go so really, the sharing term is an all-encompassing term. So it's car sharing as a sort of a rental scheme, or car sharing between other people, or cars that simply you, you get into and use, and then you leave them where they are. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the, 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 the whole, um, we move on to the next slide, the, the, the whole consumer behavior in terms of mobility is, is changing. And in some markets, people like to, uh, you know, like to own a car, it's theirs. But what we're starting to see, um, especially with millennials, so, you know, the younger, the younger generation is, they don't really care. Um, yeah. And, you know, whereas they would be uh, very used to sharing their music, sharing their films, the different apps, they're actually starting to look at, at different forms of sharing and mobility as well. Do you find that your decision-making process and your sort of future development process is being impacted a lot on the trends that you're seeing amongst the younger generations? Because they, they do seem to be moving away from uh, ownership, from the concept of ownership, from even the concept of driving, and they're finding it quite an expensive thing to do, it's quite a difficult thing to do necessarily that they may not need in future. I think there needs to be a balance. You know, um, you, you mentioned right at the beginning, uh, are we all going to be driving just around in pods? And what about those people who love driving? I personally love driving, yeah. and I know you do as well. So um, you know, that, that's not going to disappear by, by any means. It, will it evolve? That's of, course, sure. of course, of course it will. And uh, you know, where that will end up is, is uh, I, I guess, the, uh, the, the big billion dollar question. Yeah. Um, of course, we're looking at uh, the, the, the future in terms of what business models will work. Um, but not forgetting that you know, we're, we're a car company and, and we're, we're building cars that, that uh, you know, hopefully drive passion in, in our customers. So if you're looking at um, mobility uh, behavior, right now 18,000, sorry, 1,800 cities um, have some car sharing schemes. We have actually have car sharing schemes here yeah, uh, within yeah. in Dubai. There's, there's yeah. a couple of... Uh, With the uh, U-Drive and uh, E-Car. Exactly, exactly. And uh, we believe by 2020, 26 million people will be using some type of sharing service going forward. So th this is absolutely perfect. And then by, you know, by 2030, one in 10, uh, one, in, one in 10 cars sold. So, so when you say they're sold, will they be sold into fleets then if they're just shared cars? Although you did mention the owners could share their own cars. It would be, be absolutely a mix. So it would be yeah. maybe some big fleet operators offering some type of sharing or potentially in some markets, and, and really driven by culture as well, depending on how the culture of the, of the country and the culture of the right. city yeah. uh, looks at. So for example, in the Middle East, we still have a bit of a, an ownership culture here, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So you know, th th this is not this is hyper-local. It's not yeah. just 
it's not a prescription on every on a country level, it's not a prescription at a city level. You can even drive down to areas of the city where this potentially would work or not work. What I have now is a little video of, of, uh, of our brand Maven, which we launched about a year ago, cool. uh, which we're looking to, uh, to, to launch internationally. So just, just before you play that, we're looking today at the four pillars of future mobility. We're looking at how we're going to be owning cars, driving cars, transporting ourselves across city. Apparently five billion of us are going to be living in cities by the year 2020. And now we're about to watch a short video. So if you have any popcorn, please be sure. <laughs> For over a hundred years, automotive has changed landscapes and improved lifestyles. And today, we are entering into a whole new era of unprecedented change. Mobility is evolving, and when we look at the future of urban mobility, we see that shared economy is here to stay. This future is marked by access and options. Fueled by technology, consumers will be able to get what they want, when they want it, and keep it as long as they want to have it. The vision for Maven is to be your personal gateway to a variety of on-demand mobility solutions. It needs to be seamless, it needs to be easy, it needs to come naturally. You download the app, you reserve the car, and you get on the road. Today, we all live our lives through our phones, which is why we designed Maven to do everything from unlocking the doors to making your shared vehicle feel more personal, all through the phone. This extension into mobility services has led us to take stock of our capabilities. For 20 years, OnStar has been a way for consumers to add value to their ownership experience. We have talked to customers over a billion times when they push that blue button, and we intend to bring that personal touch and experience to our Maven customers as well. What essentially is a startup inside General Motors has been a magnet for drawing talent from inside the company and outside, from places like Zipcar, Google, and Sidecar. And the creativity is limitless. This team is focused on changing the world. Maven isn't just about the car or getting there. It's about creating the moments and experiences that really matter. We would like to give our customers freedom to explore restaurants, to have a date night, or to go to the art gallery and actually leave the city. This is the most exciting time ever in the automobile industry. With car sharing, on-demand ride sharing, and moving into ultimately autonomous cars being delivered to your door. I do believe that there is a future out there where my eight-year-old will never learn how to drive. In my nearly 30 years at General Motors, I have never seen a period of greater change in possibility. So that was uh, Maven, and as I said, we launched that about uh, 18 months, two years ago, and during that time, over 212 million miles driven by, by members. This, you launched it 18 months ago? Yeah. 212 million miles driven oh, already? Pretty Using Maven? Using Maven. And just, again, once again, just define in a nutshell what is Maven? Maven is a lifestyle solution, allows you to rent a vehicle for an hour. Um, up to a day or even a week. So uh, you download an app on your phone and it'll identify where vehicles are located. So it could be located in, a, in, in your residential department block as an example. Um, and you can, you can rent, you'll be paying uh, for the vehicle through, through your app. I think the key thing here is not just a utility, you know, small car getting up from A to B. No, no, it's fine. It's not taking a feed off. It's not taking a feed off. Yeah. You know, yes. one day you may need a pickup truck to go and collect something from up here, or the next the day, you know, you're taking your car. Sometimes you need to move it, sometimes you need to go higher or higher. Sometimes you don't need to, you can just get the big vehicle. Yeah. Exactly. And, and next day you could be in, in uh, you know, uh, 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 Tahoe, or uh, uh, SUV, or a sports car. Yeah. Yeah. So, very much a lifestyle. The other point, I think I mentioned earlier on, is 79, 80% of those members who are utilizing the service. I would really like to do it. I'm going to do it.
about the fact that they keep, keep his details. Yeah. 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 Keep his details. Yeah. Yeah. They, they don't have to own things. They don't have to own things. They're quite happy to share and pass on and that sort of stuff. And that's sort of building on that sort of culture. Ah, man, definitely interesting. Because my brain is running at 10% of this brain. I know about him, I have seen his picture, I saw him coming in. Thinking about the future and how with developing this mobility, this is very well. I saw him standing, he wanted to go into this and he came with my friends on my way back. And then we recently launched uh, yeah. Book. So, so Book is from our luxury brand catalog. And, and again, so this is allows freedom and flexibility and, and utilization yeah. of the Cadillac brand. So you pay a uh, fixed uh, subscription yeah, but you're not the, every month. It doesn't matter how many walls are full. It matters that do you find enough sedan, content, do you enough cars? It's not about filling in. You're not the marketing part or the sales part. You're a punter. So, there are several different models that you're exploring. That didn't do so well last year. It's never happened again. It's not the library subscription. Off the record. Exactly. So it's not just about the product. They'll have the small sections, but people are into classic cars. I can't. It's like influencers. I can't change things. This is the way people are. They're not into classic cars. And that means us looking at many different things. I try. So moving on to onto electric. Electric. Yeah. So as we go, electric cars. So we go. <laughs> so you know, we're, we're very excited to to bring our little baby, my little baby, which is so the, what, the what Chevrolet Bolt. So what stood out to you? Interesting. Uh, to, what stood uh, out to you? To to the Middle East. So we we basically launched this yeah. uh, earlier on this week. I think the that have. will be available it's already sold. Within the, the Middle East, the Middle East allocation East is already by, finished. By the end of next year. Do you have any prices? I hope Sam will get some. Uh, from, from a Middle East perspective, perspective not as good as I can talk about. But Possible. He's on the tentative we'll list, but the question is at least one he should be able to get hold of. But guys are coming in and buying two cars, three cars. the problem. The allocation is only going to be 20 cars for the whole region. So it's Sam is definitely going to get a car from somewhere. I saw so that we've been the testing the vehicle over the high summer, right. so in the you know, 40, 49, yeah. 50 degrees. Well, what does it really benefit uh, me? At the end of the day, uh, he's a very private guy, he's never going to come on camera, I'm going to talk something, so I'm just helping out as a favor to you, a favor to Rob. Very, very I don't get zero benefit out of this. He's got into Instagram, because he saw somebody uploading things. Well, if he dumps like a million bucks in my account, VAT included, I'm well up for it. I'm his friend. Otherwise, I get nothing out of this. Review soon on Merging Middle East, everybody. Yeah. I've been telling cool. Cool. So please, um, I, I won't get too much into this, but uh, I'll, I'll he's, see you on the Chevrolet stand. Well, billionaires, one day, the, they're interested, the next day it's like join, a lot. This thing is going to go dead in about so a minute. Check out the Corvette, check out the Corvette, check out the Corvette. Which is, we wow, he has better roads, better climate, and take his cars all over the world. Why does he come here? This is what I don't understand. For those who are petrol heads, then this is not going to happen. That's true, he can go flat out. That's why he went fast. And, you know, yeah. in the next Auto 10, roll, 15, 20 years, and we won't even really be talking about electric, it'll really be just one of those things that yeah. we have here. So How long is he in town? Forward, maybe six or eight years' time, if we're sitting down so and having this conversation, yeah. Yeah. No, no, it won't be such a big thing. Yeah. 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 Well, we all own that yacht. A few years ago, I bought his yacht. So, but now so many manufacturers have hybrid. That's the why. Really, they should just get that as an extra option, right? Exactly. So that's what we truly believe, and we're absolutely working towards that. Big news from our perspective, yeah. literally in the last few weeks, we believe that we But if you walked in right now, I would say him. that two old new EVs are uh, going to be available in the next 18 months globally. Him, but, um, We've identified in the last looks few looks days like. that there will be CUVs. Uh, that's it, she's done. So she's done. That, that's exciting news. Going down. And indeed, by, uh, yeah, so by 2023, to give you a 20 uh, vehicles. And if you can if you look around the, the, the vehicles which are, are covered there, you can get an understanding of what those vehicles will be. So 20 vehicles in the next five years? Exactly. Wow. You're going to be busy. Very busy. Very busy. <laughs> so, you know, we haven't been hyping this. No, 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 no battery.